Good morning everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, welcome, hope you'll stick around. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you for subscribing and welcome back. So today is celebrating new subscribers really, because um, we've reached 2,000 subscribers, which is amazing. I'm so pleased, so pleased. So you don't know what it means to me. So I thought today we'd do a q and I put a post on the community page. Sorry, I'm out of breath. I just ran upstairs to get my glasses. I put a, a post on the community page asking for questions because I thought I'd do a Q&A just for those people who are new subscribers and don't really know me as well as perhaps some of you do. So I've tried to pick a selection of sort of interesting questions and yeah I'll answer as many as I can and I'm going to if you stick around until the end of the video I'm going to do a giveaway which I think you'll enjoy. I've got it right here so uh, I'll be showing you that and telling you how you can enter uh, to win the giveaway. So all that out of the way let's get on with the question and answers so my first question is what inspired you to start a youtube channel and i've answered this this before but i'm happy to to answer again um i love clothes makeup shoes nails body care all the girly stuff i love anything like that i love playing around with my nails, I like messing around with my makeup, I like trying different things with my hair, um, all of that. I don't have any sisters and I have friends but I wouldn't say I have any super close friends, I have a big family and sort of I would say the ladies in the family are, are, are sort of close friends um, and obviously family um, but I'd say Dave's my best friend really, I don't have anybody I do, I have a couple of friends who I keep contact with, but I don't see them very often. And so I thought it would be good to have some outlet for this stuff that I'm so interested in. And with the, Dave, is lovely. I wouldn't be without him. He's the best husband in the world for me. However, with the best will in the world, he's not interested in makeup or clothes or hair or shoes or anything like that, as I'm not particularly interested in golf. That's fine, you know, we're different. But I just thought I needed an outlet where I could share things I'd found, products I'd bought, uh, makeup I enjoy, techniques I've used, tips and tricks I've picked up along the way. And I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to try it. Now, I tried doing a YouTube channel several years ago, might be about six, seven years ago, and I only did it for a short while. And I stopped because my life was a bit chaotic at that time. We were moving house. I had a lot going on. I was still working full time and it just I just couldn't fit it into my life. So I stopped. Um, but now life is much more settled and um, I have much more time to do what I want to do. And so I thought I'm going to restart it. And I'm really glad I have. And I love it. I really enjoy the creativity of it. I love sharing. I love the interaction. I feel like subscribers are friends. You know, I love talking to you in, in the comments. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. And so I'm glad I did start it. So that's that's why, really, that's why I got into it in the first place. Um, okay, my five favourite YouTubers. I'm going to link them below. I'm going to say my five favourite YouTubers right now because I do move around. I stay subscribed to people, but there's some people that I watch every single video they put up. Um, so yeah, num my number one person to watch is Caroline from Mrs M. I really enjoy her content. I think she's super real. Um, she says it like it is. I feel like you're getting the real Caroline and not some sort of YouTube version of her, if you know what I mean, which I really appreciate. So I would say that Caroline is probably my favourite YouTuber and I watch the majority of videos that she puts up, I try and keep up and watch all, all of them. So yeah, I'll say she isn't my number one. I'm sure you're already subscribed, but if you're not, I will link her channel below. Um, number two, I really enjoy Alexander Rod Rodriguez, who is a, um, she's an American YouTuber and she, I've watched her since, I've, I've perhaps been watching her 10, 15 years. She's a big YouTuber. She certainly doesn't need me to tell people about her but I really enjoy her content. I've watched her since she lived with her mum in a little attic bedroom. She's now married and after much trying she's having a baby. She's a plus-size YouTuber. She really just vlogs her life but she, she shares 
lots of interesting stuff that she's bought. She shares recipes, um, house content. Um, she's got a little dog. Um, I just really, I don't know what it is about her, but I find her very um, friendly. And again, real. I'm not one for watching YouTubers that their content is so created that you feel like you don't know them at all. Um, I struggle with very done YouTube, if you like. I like real people sharing their real lives and that's what I look for. Now, I'm do I'm giving you five, uh, uh, the, other, the other three I'm going to give you are not YouTubers that I've shared before. So just because the ladies I've shared before, um, know who they are and but I just thought I'd give you some different ones so just put my glasses on so I can see what I'm reading because I wrote these down earlier so um next up is a, a lady called Elise Buck B-U-C-H she is much younger than me um very pretty she's got long red hair um and she lives in Denmark although her English is fantastic I wish my Danish was as good as her English um, and she has a vintage shop so she buys stocking for a vintage shop which she shows uh, on a YouTube channel. She also does a lot of home and garden uh, vintage inspired uh, interiors um, and I just love, I, ju I don't know what it is about her but she's just very genuine, very inspiring. I love watching her, she'll sort of get on and paint a whole house herself and the garden always looks beautiful and it's nice watching somebody in another country, seeing how they live their life. Um, and then she has a little vintage shop. So she, I think her shop is also online. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, Elise Buck, I can really recommend her. I've been watching her for years as well. Number four is a bit different. Um, the channel's called Mossy Bottom and the chap who runs the channel used to be in Ireland. I used to watch him in Ireland. He bought a piece of land in Ireland and aimed for self-sufficiency, so growing his own vegetables and his own food. He had lots of animals on there. Lived in a, a caravan for a long time while he restored the cottage that he eventually moved into. And he's recently met uh, a lady, um, so he's got a new partner and they've had a baby together and they've actually sold Mossy Bottom 1 and they've moved to uh, Mossy Bottom 2, which is a small holding in Finland. Um, quite a bit more land I think, I think about four or five acres and they've got lots of little buildings on there, they're living in the sort of, I think it was a house meant for holidays uh, so they're in the process of turning that into a house that they can live in year round because obviously it gets extremely cold in, in Finland and, and I really enjoy his channel. He's an introvert which I find really interesting and he does YouTube. I would say I'm a bit of an introvert as well, you wouldn't believe it but I think I probably am. Um, I like the quiet. I like time on my own. I enjoy sharing on YouTube and I enjoy my channel and I love seeing my family and friends, but I also really appreciate spending time on my own. Maybe that's what appeals to me. So I really enjoy that channel. And number five, I don't know that you already watched Mrs. Melissa M, but she is an American lady who does makeup, beauty, skincare. She mainly focuses on that and I've had some really good tips from her and some really good product recommendations as well so I'd say she's number five at the moment they change all the time and I've got lots of others but those are the five I'm really sort of gravitating towards at the moment okay next question I have been waffling for a while so I'm going to try and speed up a little bit my all-time favorite video that I made um do you know what? I think I'm going to have to say it was a swimwear video I made very recently. It took a lot of courage for me to make that video. Um, I really thought for several months whether, whether I wanted to do it or not um, and thought about ways I could do it without feeling too vulnerable and exposed. Um, you know, you're out there for everybody to see and I thought I might get some difficult comments to deal with. I actually haven't had one nasty comment on that video. They've all been extremely positive. And I'm really proud of myself for doing it. I feel like there should be more women showing ordinary bodies, you know, plus size, whatever you want to call it, average UK 16. Um, I think I think I read the other day that the average um, woman in the UK over 50 is a size 16. Um, so we're not alone. You know, there are lots of us that are plus size. Um, and yeah, 
I'm just, I'm really proud of myself for doing it. It's not the one that's had the most views, um, definitely not, but it's the one that I'm proud of. So yeah, that's, that answers that question. Um, somebody asked, um, did I have any school teachers that made an impression on me? I didn't actually. Um, I went to the local primary school. Um, There's a couple of nicest teachers, but yeah, I can't say um, any of them had a massive, made a massive impression on me. I went to senior school and for the first three years, I was really well behaved. And then I kind of discovered boys and for the last couple of years, I just didn't want to be there. School was not interesting to me. I found it boring. I just wanted to be out into the world. I mean, I went back and did a degree later, um, but at that time, it wasn't for me. And so I didn't find school particularly exciting other than the social life that went on after school and before school and at the weekends. So no, I didn't have a particularly inspiring teacher. Um, do I find it um, stressful living in a shared house? So for those of you that don't know, we live in a house with my daughter and her husband and my mum and dad. Now, when I say that, imagine, if you imagine us all sat in the lounge watching TV together, it's really not like that at all. I could not cope with that. So my mum and dad, we turned the annex, uh, the garage into an annex. So they live in the annex. The house is a big house. We've got six bedrooms and it kind of lends itself to be split in half, really. So my daughter and her husband have the right side of the house and Dave and I have the left side of the house. So we have our bathroom, a spare bedroom, our bedroom on one side. And on the other side, my daughter has an office. Her husband has an office. Uh, their son, Oscar, has an office, um, has a bedroom. And their bedroom is sort of the master bedroom in the house, which means that it's almost like a small apartment. So it's got a bathroom off, off the bedroom. It's also got a walk-in wardrobe big walk-in wardrobe off there as well and so their bedroom also has a lounge seating area where they can sit and watch tv we also have a conservatory on the back that they use so we all have our own lounge my mum and dad have a lounge bedroom bathroom kitchen in their little bit of the house they come into our kitchen and share at the cooking facilities if they want to or if they don't want to they can cook in there whichever they would prefer Dave and I have the lounge I'm filming in now. Um, we have our own bedroom, which is a good sized bedroom, our own bathroom and a spare bedroom if we want guests to come and stay. Um, we have a dining room that's shared. So we sort of, if we have a family meal, we sort of share the dining room. We share the kitchen, but to be honest, my daughter and her husband work long hours. They're often in the kitchen before we are in the morning and they're often not eating their evening meal till around seven o'clock, by which time we've eaten and cleaned up etc and then they have a conservatory as we have this as our lounge they have the conservatory as there but they they don't use it a lot to be honest they use it in the winter because it's got a log burner in there it's really quite cozy but in the summertime they tend to use their lounge off their bedroom upstairs so no it it doesn't worry me at all but we don't share i mean today for instance it's about 11 o'clock i haven't seen anybody other than dave i haven't seen anyone yet and i probably won't see anyone maybe till this evening. I occasionally bump into somebody in passing, coming through the kitchen. I'll pop in and see if mum and dad are okay. The whole reason they're there is so I can keep an eye on things. Um, so yeah, I don't find it stressful. This is the occasional thing that bo bothers me. I'm very tidy and so is Dave and people leaving things hanging around annoy me. We have a, a large porch that you come into and shoes and coats and things. I often move people's shoes and coats because that drives me a little bit mad. Um, or if somebody's not, if they've been in the kitchen and not cleaned up after themselves, it doesn't happen very often. But you know, if somebody's rushing off back to work, they both work from home, they'll occasionally not have, to, have time to clean up and that irritates, takes me a little, little bit. But generally it works really well. It's been a good move for us all. It's not forever. Um, we're thinking at least another three years, um, my dad is terminally ill and so things are going to change. Um, we just don't know at the moment, but it is, we're, we are committed to being here for at least another three years and then we'll, we'll take it from there. So yeah, that's why I don't find it stressful because we do all have our own space. And I say to anyone planning on doing this, make sure you buy something that's big enough or the right shape 
that you can have your own space. Okay, moving on. Um, somebody asked, do I wear a slip under dresses in summer? Do I find them a bit thin and do I wear a slip? Not in the summer, I don't. I wouldn't buy anything that was completely, that you could see through. I generally buy cotton dresses and so generally they're not see-through. Um, I do wear a slip in the winter time. Um, I'm always cold. And so if I wear a dress in winter and boots, I will wear tights and I wear a vest top and I'll wear a little underslip as well, just for warmth really, just so I feel like I've got a few layers on. But yeah, they're not fashionable like they used to be on underslips, are they? Mine's sort of a waist one. Um, but I remember when my mum was younger that she always wore like an under underslip, you know, a full length one. Um, but yeah, I don't wear one in the summer at all and only if it's really cold in the winter. Um, do I go swimming at all? I mentioned in the swimsuit video that I love to swim. It's my favourite form of exercise. I love that it gives me support on my joints. They don't hurt when I swim. I just love it. I swim in Australia. I swim on holiday. Before we moved here, I was a member of a private health club, which we, um, Dave was a member of the golf club and I was a member of the gym and so was he. And they had a beautiful private swimming pool that was really nice. The lighting was low. I used to swim there all the time. We've moved here and I can't find anywhere suitable to swim. There's the local pool, which is fine. It's just not it doesn't doesn't draw me in it's it's very public and open and bright and there's lots of kids and adults in there as there should be but i really would like to join somewhere where there's a bit more of um a calm atmosphere you know nice lighting um a sauna a spa if i find somewhere in this area that's not too far away it will definitely join but i also don't want to join somewhere that's an hour away which means that i'll think about going and not go so I'm a bit stuck at the moment with that um but yeah if not here then when we move um wherever we move to I'll talk about that in a little bit then um yeah I will definitely do more swimming I've, I, it's, it's been lacking here just because there's nowhere convenient local to join um what's this do um tell the story of your job Okay, I'll be quick on this, otherwise we'll be here all day. Um, so, as I said, didn't enjoy school, left school without any qualifications. I had a couple of O-levels, nothing, nothing to write home about. When my youngest... Oh, how old was I? When my youngest son was born, I was 29. And at that point, my other three were off at school and I just had Danny at home. And I started to be more interested in learning and doing more academic stuff. So I did a couple of A-levels. I really enjoy English Lit and language and that's sort of my interest history. Um, and so I did a couple of A-levels and then I went to university. So when Danny started nursery, I went to university and did an English language and literature degree, which I really, really enjoyed. I met, met lots of nice people there. There was lots of mature students. I think I was around 32 to something like that when I when I graduated. So I did a degree and then I did a postgraduate certificate of education in adult education, specialising in basic skills. So teaching adults with learning difficulties, um, with special educational needs, um, specialising in that, um, particularly teaching English literature and language. Um, and then I worked as a teacher for quite a few years in colleges, so further education, teaching adults with um, dyslexia or, you know, a variety of, of um, learning difficulties, which I really enjoyed. And then I was promoted and became um, head of the dyslexia department, which, again, I enjoyed. It took me away from the teaching a little bit, which was not I didn't think about it enough before I accepted the promotion. And so I did that for a short while and then I was promoted again to curriculum manager of the special educational needs team, which was a great big jump in salary, um, which we needed at the time. And so I went for it. I enjoyed it. I liked the responsibility. I didn't like the fact that I would turned into an admin person. I spent all day managing people's problems and managing timetables and 
um, doing assessments and I like the interaction with the parents, spent a lot more time with um, the parents of the people we were working with and working out what their needs were and putting support into place. I enjoyed that part of the job. I didn't enjoy the fact that I never ever taught because I was just so busy with um, you know, the other side of the role. And so I did that for a few years and thought, this is just awful, it's too stressful. I need to move away from this. And so luckily I was in a position with my husband who has always had his own business and you know has done all right with that, that I was able to stop doing that. So I handed in my notice, I had a little bit of time to think about what I wanted to do and then I started selling from home. So I did some eBay selling, I did some Etsy selling and I did that for a number of years um, and it's only really in the last 12 months I've sort of slowed that right down. I don't do uh, reselling anymore and I just do YouTube now basically. Um, I do the odd li little other things so um, I've got a little driving job that I do, um, I look after my mum and dad as well um, so yeah that's so you could sort of say I'm semi-retired I, I suppose um, and I'm lucky that I can afford to do that at my age um, so yeah that's where I am at the moment. So my main focus at the moment is YouTube, uh, which I love. And I started this up in July last year, I think, and we're up to 2000 subscribers and I've been monetized since about Christmas time. So I'm really pleased with how quickly it's grown. Hopefully it'll continue to grow as well. So I've gone on for ages on that one. Let's move on. Somebody else asked, do you have a job? Well. Yeah, I do, <laughs> as I've just explained. And um, so I'm a housewife, I'm a carer, I'm a YouTuber, um, I'm a driver occasionally, I do a little driving job as well. So those are all my hats that I wear. Okay, somebody else asked, how many grandchildren do you have? I've got five grandchildren. My daughter's um, the eldest and her son, Oscar, is 15. Um, so he's our oldest grandson. I see him every other week because he has a week with his dad and a week with his mum. So we see him every other week. Um, and then my uh, middle son, David, has two little girls um, who are nine and six. And then my son in Australia also has two little girls and they are ten and eight. So, yeah, we've got five, God, four girls and one boy. Gorgeous grandchildren. OK. Somebody else asked, would you ever live in Australia? Well, yes, I would. Um, we lived in Australia for a short while, perhaps 19 years ago. Uh, we did about a year there. Um, it was difficult because the children just did not settle. They were too old to move at that stage. Um, it just wasn't right for our family. We tried it for a year and we decided we needed to come back to the UK, which we did. However, the children are all grown up now and off our hands. And Dave and I are coming to the point where possibly, you know, in the next five years, Dave might think about retiring. And Australia is kind of one of the possibilities. So we both enjoy, as we get older, we both really enjoy the sunshine. We enjoy the warmth. Um, I have a much, door, much more outdoor lifestyle over there. As I said, I swim a lot. I've got a lot of family in Australia. My brother and his wife, who are sort of our best friends, really. Um, my son is there, um, other friends, my grandchildren. However, of course, I've got grandchildren here um, and my other children here. So it's a difficult decision. I think what we would like to do, I don't know whether it would be possible to do this, but what we'd like to do is possibly buy an apartment here, just something small that we can live in in the summertime and then spend the rest of the year in Australia. So perhaps nine months of the year in Australia and three months in the UK. Um, that way we'll get to see all the children, all the family. Um, so, yeah. That is a possibility. It's not definite yet. It's something we're still mulling through and working towards, but it's definitely a possibility. Okay, what's my favourite colour? Green. If you see my um, 
interiors of my home there's lots of green um you can see a green lamp here the sofa's sort of a gray green um yeah definitely green i wear a lot of blue and i wear green occasionally but especially for the home i love green i just think it's a really great tonal color that you can use sort of sort of right from very very pale green to dark greens i just think they're very warm and cozy um and the final question how do i approach decorating a room i had to sit and think about this um i wasn't sure but i think what i tend to do is try and find something to inspire me so it might be a piece of furniture it might be some kind of fabric um it might be um a rug it might be some wallpaper and once i've got that thing like upstairs in the bedroom you've seen my bedroom um the dark green and white wallpaper was a real inspiration for the rest of the room in this room the um rug um you've seen the rug before it's sort of cream with a gray um mark through it i, I wanted this room to be sort of very restful and calm so there's lots of greens natural colors browns and tonal colors orange cushions i can change the cushions up in at different times of the year there's lots of greenery in here with the plants and accessories so yeah i think i try and find it some sort of inspiration and then go from there because i tend to do the deciding what colors dave's very comfortable with me picking out colors because he he always enjoys what i do but he does the um the actual work of papering and painting and anything that needs doing so yeah very lucky so that's the end of the q a section so if you're still with me thank you i know i can waffle i tried to make it as as succinct as possible so the giveaway let's get on to the giveaway so i thought what i would do for the giveaway is one of these bags that i've really enjoyed this year so this is the lily england bag and they do them in all different colors so nice and soft crossbody bag so not too big but fits everything i need in i've got this black one and i've also got a navy blue one um so i ordered this one for whoever wins and it's got this nice black and white strap um and it just tucks on at either end and the straps are interchangeable as well it also comes with this gold chain strap you know if you're going out in the evening and you want to just change it up and you just pop them on i'll put a picture of the bag uh, on the screen for you so yeah it's got a gold hardware and it's got a zipped compartment inside which is really handy um and yeah i just find this a really nice size for everyday use um so that is the giveaway if you'd like to be um included in the giveaway please just leave the word handbag in your comment leave me a comment leave the word handbag and um, I will link to the giveaway. It's got a little pocket at the front as well with a, a stud. It's sort of like a um, dimpled material as well. Yeah, I find these really good quality. So I will send that to whoever wins the giveaway. So it's going to be open from today, from the day of this video, two weeks. So not um, next Thursday, the Thursday after. Let me just double check the date. Okay, so the giveaway is going to be open until the 4th of July, which is election day, so it should be easy to remember. Um, on that day, I will draw the giveaway. Uh, don't forget, leave the comment handbag in your comments. And then I know you want to enter. Um, I will put it into the, there's a online sort of draw thing that you can use. Pop it in there. Um, please don't um, respond to any strange bot comments i will um, put it on the community page for the winner and i will also message them directly as well so um yes yeah, sometimes you get these weird bots that say you've won and click this and click that don't do that i will message you i will put it on my community page and um, possibly i'll put it on my instagram page as well so watch out for the winner so i hope you enjoyed that and found out a little bit more about me and um, i'm going to go now because i've talked long enough i'm going to go and have a cup of tea and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.